Okay, this might work. Let me try it. <sighs> Bro, what are you doing? Hold on. I'm changing colors like a chameleon. What? This video is about changing colors, so I'm a chameleon. Um, bro, do you know how stupid that sounds right now? Is it working now? No, of course it's not working. I swear I feel different though. What? What is, what? What is happening? Bro, I can't stop. God, dude, you need to see a doctor. Oh my. Bro, I can't stop. What is happening right now? What? What? Stop. Bro, you gotta move out, man. I'm, I'm so done with your weird stuff. Bro, I don't, I don't even know what just happened. Oh. Oh no. Oh crap. What's up everybody, Joe Von D here. Welcome to part two of three of our The Floor is Lava game. If you've been following along, you should have a character who can take damage and a character who dies when they're at zero health. Today, we're gonna customize our character's health bar as they take damage during gameplay. So there's actually a bunch of ways that we can have our health bar color change as our health gets lower. For example, we can have our health immediately change at different percentages, or we can have the color gradually change between 100% and 0%. We're gonna do the latter option. We're gonna have it gradually change when we set up our function today. So let's open up our third person character blueprint and we need to create a new variable. So under the variable tab, go ahead and hit the plus icon. This is gonna be our health bar color. So let's go ahead and change the name to health bar color. And the variable type on the top right is actually gonna to have to be a slate color. Go ahead and select that, compile and save. And remember that a variable is just a piece of information. Right now that piece of information is this color here under the default value. That's the only bit of information that this variable holds. And what we wanna do is set up a function so that this color actually changes based on our health percentage. And the next thing we'll do is bind our health bar color and opacity to the variable that we just made. And we do that in a similar way to how we bound our name and health amount in our character during the previous few videos. So let's go ahead and minimize our third person character, back out and open our basic UI. All we have to do here is select our progress bar, scroll down to the appearance section under fill color and opacity. We can go ahead and bind that to our player's new health bar color. And now if you play to test it out, you'll actually see that the health bar is the same color as our default value for the new variable that we just made in our third person character blueprint. And now we have to set up the gradual change in color whenever we take damage. And we'll set that up in our third person character blueprint with a function. And luckily we learned a little bit about functions in the last video, and this is how to actually make a function without collapsing them from the event graph. Go ahead and click on the plus function button, and we'll go ahead and name this something like health color handle. That way we remember what it does. And in this function, we'll handle the changing of the health bar color variable. So let's go ahead and grab that variable, drag it in, and we're actually going to set that value to something new every single time we call this function. This input here is actually going to be what our color is set to. And what we want to do is called a linear interpolation which is also known as a lerp. And luckily there's a function that we can search for to lerp two colors. Let's go ahead and drag off of this input and we're gonna make a slate color. That means this value here is gonna be the color that our health bar changes to. And to determine what this color is, we're gonna drag off of it and we're gonna do a linear interpolation for color. So a lerp is a linear interpolation between the A value and the B value based on an alpha. And an alpha is a value that's 100% to 0%. Our 0% is gonna be A. So when we're at 0% health, we want our health to be red. So let's go ahead and plug that in for A. 
And for B, this is what color our health bar is gonna be when we're at 100% health. So let's go ahead and just make that appear green. Now the alpha is gonna be determined based on our health bar. So let's go ahead and grab our health and plug that in right here. This works because our health is a value from 100% to 0%. And an alpha you can kind of think of as an opacity, where 100% is completely opaque and 0% is completely transparent with 50% being somewhere in the middle. But in our case with the alpha, the 100% is gonna be completely green and the 0% completely red with 50% being somewhere in the middle. But if we play, it's not quite working yet. And there's actually two reasons why. The first reason is because we haven't actually told our damage function when to handle the health bar color change. And second, our default health bar color isn't the same color as our 100% value. So let's hop into our third person character blueprint again, and we'll go ahead and open up the take damage function. After we set the new damaged health value, we can go ahead and just drag in our health color handle and plug that in. Be sure to plug the other end of the health bar color handle into the branch. And now every single time we take damage, it'll deal damage to our health bar and it'll update our color according to the new health value since it happens after the new health value set. If we play at this point, you'll see our starting color for our health bar is pink, but if we deal damage, it'll actually update correctly now. To change the default color for our health color variable, all we have to do is go here to the default value, change it to green, and that matches our 100% value on our linear interpolation. So if we play now, it will actually correctly go. And if for some reason you don't wanna change the default value, this will also work. You can actually grab the function that we created, the health color handle, and have that run when event begins play and now as soon as the game begins, it'll automatically update the health bar color to the 100% value in our health color handle. But I recommend not doing that since it does take up just a tiny bit more processing power. All right, so now your health bar should be gradually changing from one color to another, whatever you set it to. So let's do a bit of level design and make our level larger and more intuitive to play in. Let's go ahead and minimize our blueprint here in the viewport is actually where we change the level. So we're just gonna go ahead and expand the floor. To move the camera, go ahead and just right click and then you can WASD your way around the map. Uh, Q will go ahead and move you down. E will go ahead and move you up. And it should work just like most games you play with WASD. Let's go ahead and left click on the ground. And the scale here is actually the size of the ground. It's locked so if I change the X value will also equally change the Y value and the Z value. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the X to three. That way we have a larger playing area. If we select one of the sides, we can go ahead and move it as long as we have the translation tool active. And I'm just gonna move it all the way to the end. Same with these other sides here, go ahead and do that. You can scale them to make a box area, but I'm not really worried about it. And there we go. So let's go ahead and select all of these objects here. Go ahead and hold control. That way you can select multiple objects at once. I'm even gonna grab our player character. And you know what, I'll even grab our chair. And I'm gonna move everything all the way off to one corner. That way, when the place is filled with lava, we can travel to the other side of the map. And in fact, I'm just gonna select our player and let's go ahead and put him right up top if you select the rotation tool here, you can actually rotate him so that he's facing a decent direction. And hit end, that way your character is directly on the ground. So this is where we're gonna design the level. Go ahead and select your cube, and this is gonna be our platform that our player jumps on. And we'll move it right in front of the staircase just with the regular translate tool. And now we're gonna duplicate it. When you move this cube, hold Alt, and that will go ahead and create a duplicate. I'm gonna start off by having them near each other. As the player learns the game, uh, it's good to have them near each other. That way they can go ahead and understand how the game works. That starts the difficulty off easy, and then it progressively gets harder for the player as they get better and better. And then you can make the level even more difficult by having some platforms elevated. But make sure that it's not impossible. You may have to play test once or twice. 
And the last thing we're going to do is add a plane to the level, move it up a little bit, and we're going to scale it to something like 300. That should cover the entire area. Be sure to select the plane that we just dropped into the level. We'll go ahead and go to the details panel, scroll down to collision presets, and we'll set that to no collision. Now when you jump into the plane, you'll actually go straight through it, and when we have it looking like lava, it'll look like you're wading through lava. So now you should have a level to jump around in, and that's going to bring this video to a close. Hopefully you learned something. Be sure to watch out for part three coming out in the next few days. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to help out the channel. I'm here to help you think like a game developer, so stick around for more videos like this.